Okay. Um, thank you very much for attending this session. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Shohei Matsura. I am a senior software engineer at LY Corporation. Uh, the company was known as Yahoo Japan Corporation before until this September, but the uh, company has changed its name due to M&A with uh, Line Corporation, a popular messaging service company in the East Asia. And today, I am going to talk about database parameter or tuning through CI-CD pipelines. But before doing so, um, please allow me to introduce myself a little bit more. Again, um, my name is Shohei, and I also have another name, Dominic, that sounds like French. <laughs> and this is because I was given this name uh, by the Canadian Immigration Office when I was studying abroad in Canada, in Montreal, where people speak French. So I do have a name that sounds like French. It's unique, right? <laughs> uh, so you can call me Shohei or Dominique either way, works. <laughs> uh, going back to the talk, uh, I'm at LY Corporation. I'm in charge of R&D in database system uh, where I develop in-house storage engine for MySQL. And I do research and the implementation of new tech trends for RDBs. And prior to joining LY and the Yahoo Japan Corporation, I was a developer of commercial RDBMS, and where I developed like query optimizer and the concurrency control and disaster recovery feature and etc. So I do love database technology a lot. <laughs> now, uh, let me illustrate what we are going to talk about today. Database parameter tuning is very hard, right? Because we need to consider many factors at the same time. For example, we need to consider application workload and hardware resources we have. And we also need to decide what parameter to tune to a fat value to meet the SLA. So, and to make the things easier, we use machine learning. We integrate machine learning models into a CI-CD system to automate the tuning process. This is when application developers put their code uh, into a CI-CD system, we let the CI-CD system to analyze the application workload and infer optimal parameter setting with machine learning models and apply the inference result to the target database automatically. That's the topic we are talking about today. So uh, here is the agenda of the talk. Uh, first, uh, let me illustrate the data infrastructure of the LY Corporation and explain why we are motivated by this research. Second, let me further explain why we need to combine database parameter tuning with machine learning and CI-CD. Third, let me demonstrate our system CI-CD tune that executes the automatic tuning with machine learning in a CI-CD pipeline. At last, I would like to conclude the session by sharing with you the future direction of our research. Now let's begin. Now let me explain LY Corporation and its data infrastructure. LY Corporation has a vision to create an amazing life platform to our users. And the company has more than 28,000 employees in total. One of the unique characteristics of the company is that it has diverse service portfolio to fulfill people's everyday needs. So we deliver more than 100 services, uh, ranging from media service to commerce, uh, entertainment, lifestyle, and online ad services. And to deliver our diverse internet services to our users, we build and operate our own data centers, and they are located multiple regions across Japan. 
to make sure they are always keep running even in the case of natural disaster or power outage of a certain region. We also, in addition, virtualize our infrastructure by using open source software stacks such as OpenStack and Kubernetes to use our resources efficiently. Um, here is a brief diagram of a data infrastructure and it is made redundant and reliable with OSS software stack. And in our data infrastructure, MySQL plays an important role, and their nodes are spread across multiple regions and availability zones to make sure one node is always running, even in the case of natural disaster. And data are always synchronized across region and availability zone by data replication. Another characteristic of our data infrastructure is that it is provided as a form of service or DBAS. And it is made easy for application developer to use and the application developer can launch a MySQL cluster by specifying a flavor from a web UI in a self-service manner. Now, let me explain why we need to combine DB parameter tuning with machine learning first before combining it with CICD. First, as I said before, DB parameter tuning is hard because we need to consider many factors at the same time. But it is even harder in DBus. This is because in DBus, DB instances are launched by the application developer on their, zone, on their own without having the involvement of the DBA who maintain the DBus environment. So for the DBA, there is no chance to know what the application is doing, and they have no idea what to tune <coughs> database parameter because they don't know the application workload. In contrast, in old days, um, before DBus appears, DBA were often asked to help application developer in schema design and query design and hardware capacity planning, so they knew what the application was doing. So they had uh, the, the database tuning uh, was a little bit easier than DBus. Uh, so to facilitate uh, database parameter tuning easier in DBus, DB researcher came up with the idea to autonomously tune database parameters according to application workload with the aid of machine learning. And there are many academic researches uh, that are going on and many output are uh, published. <clears throat> um, here is a brief description of the database parameter tuning with machine learning and its flow. In database parameter tuning with machine learning, we deploy agents in database server in the production environment to collect metrics from there. And these collected metrics are then sent to the old tuning system that is separate from the uh, database servers. <clears throat> and the collected, uh, in the old tuning system, there are two machine learning models running. The first model is called future extraction and this model is used to uh, extract, extract workload features from the collected input metric. And these extracted workload features are then fed into the second machine learning model called automatic tuning machine learning model to infer uh, optimal database parameter setting with respect to the application workload features. And the automatic tuning system then 
automatically deploy the inference result to the production environment. And this whole process keeps running forever and to catch any workload change in the database server in the production environment. Um, this process automated the database parameter tuning, but there is an issue with this approach. That is, and the accuracy is not 100%. Inference is just inference, and so the inference result could be wrong. So if the inference result is wrong, it could cause, and if it deployed to the production environment, it could cause up an expected performance degradation in the production environment. On the right side of this slide, uh, we evaluated a machine learning based automatic tuning model against our e commerce workload at LY. The x axis is just time, the y axis is query latency in milliseconds. The dotted line is a query latency with a default um, parameter setting, and the solid black undotted line a query latency with auto-tuned parameter applied. And if you look at this graph, you can see the query latency has worsened more than 10 times due to wrong auto-tuning result applied there. This is a serious issue, right? Because we have performance degradation in the production environment. So, and to cope this issue, we have came up with the idea to auto-tune DB parameters with machine learning, but we make its risk assessment in the CI-CD pipeline before deploying them to the production environment. We integrate machine learning models into CI-CD system and correct metrics from the DB server in the DB environment while test and application build are being run in a CI-CD pipeline. And at the end of the CI-CD CI -CD application developers can check whether SLA or performance requirement is met with all tuning result or not. And they can now decide whether to deploy the inference result to the production environment. With this approach, we can avoid unexpected performance degradation caused by wrong automatic tuning result applied to the production environment. Now, uh, let me uh, demonstrate our proposal system, CICD2, by which execute ML-based automatic database parameter tuning in CICD pipeline. Um, it's a very <laughs> busy slide, and we, you know, it's probably hard to see. But uh, here is the overall architecture of the system. As a CI-CD system, <clears throat> uh, we use an uh, open source uh, CI-CD system called Screwdriver. And it is connected to a machine learning model repository, which hosts uh, two machine learning models feature extraction, and the automatic tuning models. And these two machine learning models are trained offline in a separate environment from CI-CD by using database uh, parameters and the metrics collected from many database servers. Uh, when application developer push uh, database application code to CI-CD system or screwdriver, and the screw driver pulls two machine learning models from ML machine learning model repository and start running application build and test. While ex executing application build and test, metrics are collected from the database server in the um, dev environment, and these are fed into machine learning models in CI-CD system to infer optimal database parameter setting with respect to the application. Finally, 
and DB all tuned parameter setting is output and shown to the uh, return to the uh, application developer. And now they can make the determination whether to deploy the automatic tuning um, result to the corresponding DB server in the production environment. And uh, this is the overall architecture of our proposed system. Now, uh, let's see how actually CI-CD tune works. I hope the video works well. <laughs> uh, in the demonstration, uh, we try to build a simple web application to execute sysbench workload against MySQL. And we make the definition of a CI-CD job to build this web application and we also uh, specify which API to test uh, in, C in this uh, CI-CD pipeline. And the application developer pushes this definition together with application code to kick the CI-CD job. And you can see the whole process starts now running. And if you click the node DB parameter uh, inference, you can see actually, uh, how database uh, or tuning inference is being done by using machine learning models. And you can see also the uh, auto-tuned parameter setting in a CSV format. And if you click the node DB uh, risk assessment knob, if you go to the bottom, you can see the query latencies with auto-tuned parameters and the default setting. And in this case, since the uh, query latency with auto-tuned parameter is lower than the default setting, uh, it is displayed as good to deploy, and the application developer can rely on this message to deploy the auto-tuned result to the production environment. Uh, let me just briefly uh, describe uh, two machine learning models uh, used in the demo. The automatic tuning consists of uh, two uh, layers. And uh, model number one is called uh, workload embedders. And this model is used to uh, extract workload features. And the second model, and the output of the first model is used as an input of the second model. And the second model is called uh, TPS estimator. And this model infer DB parameters to either maximize TPS or minimize query latency for the given workload. At last, uh, I'd like to share with you the future direction of, the res of our research. One direction is to do more POC with more diverse workload. Uh, in the demo, we have just tried to auto-tune a very simple web application workload, namely Sysbench. But uh, at LY, we have more than 100 services, and we would like to um, um, validate the uh, usefulness of our proposal system against this diverse workload. Um, this is this challenge is more fundamental in our proposal system. That is to absorb the differences between dev environment and proto environment. In a CI/CD, we usually use dev environment, right? However, <laughs> there are always differences between dev environment and proto environment, such as hardware specs on the size of data as, and and other, many others. So uh, we need some way to transfer DB parameter inference result obtained in dev environment 
um, to the proto environment in deploying them to the production environment. Because production environment has larger data or larger a machine. Um, to tackle this problem, we are now collaborating uh, with academia to predict DB performance of a production environment with a given parameter setting from DB performance in the dev environment. And by using this prediction model, we can determine if an old tuning result can meet the performance requirement in the broad environment. And the research is going on right now. And before closing my presentation, I'd like to express my gratitude to the following people. Um, first, Mr. Nakamori and Dr. Kawashima from Keio University uh, for their promotion and collaboration of this research. And I'd like to uh, also express my gratitude to Mr. Hoshino from Cybos Lab for his support and comment on this research. Also, I'd like to express my special thanks to Mr. Kinoshita from Kyoto University for his effort on building machine learning models to all two database parameters. At last, I would like to um, express my gratitude to all our colleagues in LY Corporation for their support on this research. With their, without their support, um, this research cannot be done. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I'd like to um, finish my presentation, and I think a few minutes is left, so I can take a few questions. And thank you very much for attending this session. Yeah, but um, but uh, uh, as you know, I, I'm not fluent in English, so please speak for slowly, or you can ask me questions in French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't speak French, so we'll have to stick to English. How well do the results from the development environment translate to a production environment? Uh, well, yeah, I know some, but uh, I cannot tell you right now because I am going to publish the result in academia soon. Okay. Okay. So we'll I'm wait sorry. for that. Thank I'm you. Sorry. <laughs> we have one more question. I'm going to go ah, sure. in the mic. Thank you. <laughs> That's a little far right. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, Miguel Martinez. Uh, my understanding is that the scope of this uh, research is database engine parameters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, have you considered a schema a structure, a schema impact against those parameters on, on, that, on your research? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. And I have never, yeah, I have yet uh, thought of that kind of you know, questions. Oh, thank yeah, you. so thank you. Yeah, we need to catch uh, the schema change as well. So the same thing, you know, like when you have a multi-tenant shared environment, you know, are there different results when you, when you run the same models? And how do you translate them, you know, to specific tenants? Have you thought about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In DBus environment, we have usually a multi-tenancy, right? Uh, so that's a very important question, but uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. As similar to other people, have you considered moving this to things such as um, consuming query logs to provide app dev developers with suggestions on how to improve their queries mm -hmm. or you know, giving them feedback on common deadlocks and ways that they could improve the application on that side? Ah, yes, uh, actually we have tested uh, like uh, consuming query logs and uh, like uh, slow query logs and uh, other operating system logs to improve the machine learning um, models. And, uh, but, uh, but we are still working on that, so yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I will, I will keep you updated uh, in the, probably in the next uh, opportunity. <laughs> so thank you very much.